Thanks, Alan. Uh, hey, everybody. Thank you all for joining tonight. And uh, I hope you're ready to hear about, uh, hear more about the Career Center, hear more about resources for our first year undergraduate students. Um, my goal, just before I launch into things, so my goal for tonight basically is to introduce you to what the Career Center does, some of our key resources, the key ways you can engage with us. Um, but also, I, I do want to say this, and I'll probably echo it throughout too. I know when you're a first year student, um, there's a lot going on. You know, you're acclimating to college, especially now you're acclimating to a college, to college at a really challenging time with the pandemic going on and is class in person, is it hybrid, is it, is it remote? Things are changing around us a lot these days. And so it's a period of change in your life in general, um, but it's also just a time on top of that, where there's a lot of change in the world around us. So I say that because I know your life is probably moving pretty fast as a first year student. And a lot of, you know, a lot of what you're trying to do is just, you know, get through foundation year and do well, um, pick your major and kind of see where your RISD education is going to head to. So nothing I present tonight, I really don't want this to feel like anything for tonight to feel like pressure or feel like a homework assignment or anything like that. But at the same time, I think if you're a first year student, student and you know about resources and you know about how you can get started exploring your careers and understanding career paths and seeing where alumni um, have gone and what they're doing out in the world, like it's like anything else, right? Knowledge is power um, and it's empowering and it can help you plan for the future and you can kind of start to take, um, start to take on little career tasks in small doses and it's going to make life easier for you down the road. So that's kind of a thought tonight. Um, so hopefully this will just kind of be fun. You'll get to see some possibilities and opportunities, but again, like not feel like, you know, you have pressure to do anything um, or that you have to take on more than you can chew in this moment. So that's the idea. With that said, let's kind of jump right into it. So if there's one major takeaway um, I want you all to have by the time we're done tonight, it is to go to and potentially bookmark, save our website, the Career Center website, which is careercenter.risd.edu. And the reason I suggest that is we've sort of built it to be kind of like this 24 seven interactive guide that you can go to at any time. So when it's like, 10 o'clock on a Wednesday and you've got that burning career question and our office is closed and you don't really know who you can turn to to ask it, you can go to the website and chances are there's some kind of advice or guidance around the topic you're, you're seeking or trying to learn about. And there's a way you can educate yourself or there's a resource that's going to help you. Um, so I want you to just know so much of what I'm going to talk about tonight is actually referenced on the website and Alan will be helping me out throughout to kind of share some links out through the chat as we go. Um, and he's already done so, so you can kind of see how that's going to work. Um, but I want you to kind of know that this is here for you and it's here for you now. It's here for you for the rest of your time at RISD. It's here for you as an alum. So it's, a, it's just a good thing to, to know about. But beyond the online resource that is the website, which again, we'll sort of like dive into and I'll show you some things as we go. Um, one of the big things I want you all to be aware of is our career advising. It's such a huge part of what we do and the service that we offer to current students, uh, first year students included, as well as even alumni. It's actually a service for life. So you can get career advising while you're here at RISD and even after you graduate. So that's like an exciting thing for you to keep in mind. And there's multiple ways that you can do it. And there's multiple topics or issues that we can talk about, you, uh, talk about with you. So. What are some of those topics? And this is a short list. This is not an exhaustive list, but I think it's helpful to kind of know. So if you're a first year student, you're right about at that time where you're choosing a major, right? Where you're thinking about what are you gonna go into next year? What department are you gonna choose? Some of you may know already. Some of you might have come to RISD knowing, but some of you maybe don't, or maybe you came in thinking one thing and then foundation, uh, foundation year has kind of changed your perspective. Um, so one of the things we can talk about with you is if you're, you know, choosing between a couple of different majors, uh, what are the career paths look like for that major? Not that there's like one predetermined career path for any one major, but we can talk about what are common options or jobs or opportunities 
that alumni from that major pursue and how, how do they, how are they similar? How are they different? So it's helpful perspective. Um, we won't tell you what major to choose, but we'll give you some insight and guidance that'll help with your decision. Similar to that, even if you're already, maybe you've chosen your major or next year, you know, you're, you're starting to kind of like think about like, oh, what am I gonna do with a major in illustration or with a major in graphic design or with a major in painting, whatever it is, um, we can kind of talk about the different possible paths and, and different um, alumni outcomes that uh, have arrived or arised from that major. Something that might be on some of your minds, and, and if not now, that's totally okay, but certainly I would imagine will be in coming years, um, is thinking about the possibility of seeking and securing internships uh, while you're at RISD as a way to kind of get outside of the RISD bubble, learn what the professional world looks like, build some experience, add some experience to your resume, maybe even add some projects to your portfolio. This is something that we help students out with all the time in advising appointments and even through um, they have programs and ways to connect students with companies and studios. We also help students if you know if you're not interested in potentially you know doing an internship or or working a job. We also help uh, students connect with artist opportunities. We're going to talk a little bit about grants and residencies tonight. I'll explain what those are, um, but exhibition opportunities and other kinds of art-related opportunities. We help students prepare and find those types of things as well. Um, and really for any kind of professional opportunity, you're going to need application materials. Um, and really what we're talking about when we refer to application materials are usually resumes or CVs, a portfolio um, and cover letters. There are other uh, application materials too that sometimes come into play, but these are kind of the three biggies, the three most common. And we will work with students one-on-one, -on -one, critique their materials, help them you know, uh, create them, write them, build them, um, if they've never done it before and they're really uncertain of where to start. Um, so we're absolutely sort of your partner as you go through this process of building your own professional application materials. So if you want to talk about those things or other career related things, you probably want to meet with an advisor and there's multiple ways to do that. So one way <clears throat> is through our scheduled appointments. So you can schedule either 30 or 45 minute long career advising appointments with us. Um, at the moment, those are remote. Just during winter session, um, we're working remotely to um, accommodate uh, RISD's uh, academic policy at the moment. However, in spring, we'll see what happens. We still don't know for sure um, what RISD's policy will be. We were on campus in the fall, so we're hopeful that we'll be back on campus again in the spring um, and would maybe have the opportunity to do either in-person or Zoom appointments. Not sure yet, but kind of hopeful that we'll be back on campus soon. We also do drop in advising hours that don't require an appointment. So these are specific hours where you can come in and meet with an advisor, usually for about 15 or 20 minutes and ask a career related question. So it's usually good for something that's relatively quick or like only just one or two relatively short questions. Um, and these hours are Monday or Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So as I said, we're doing things remotely right now and you can find the link to do both of these things, either schedule an appointment or join drop-in hours during those specific hours at our website at, in the meet with us section, which I'm sure Alan, if he hasn't already, will be sharing out in a second. Um, but if you want to schedule an appointment or attend our drop-in hours, there is information on how to do both of those things in the link that's highlighted there on the screen. So while career advising and giving you the chance to sort of meet with one of our advisors like myself, one-on-one -on -one and talk about your questions and talk about your future and talk about your career path, while that's like a huge core of what we do, it's definitely not the only thing that we do. Another big thing that we do are career programs and workshops that we put on throughout the year. And as you can see on the screen, we do a ton. We do um, over 30 of these workshops throughout the course of the academic year. And they're all um, built around sort of career development topics that are important for you as you navigate your career during RISD and afterwards. So again, this is not an exhaustive list or a complete list, but to give you a sense of the kind of career programs that we offer throughout the year, we actually have one coming up 
on Wednesday. Well, first of all, you're at one right now. This is a perfect example of one. Uh, this is a career program. It's one of the 30 plus. Um, but on Wednesday, we have one coming up around resume building. And it's actually going to be an opportunity for you to learn about resume basics, but then also get your resume critiqued in a breakout session by somebody like me or one of our other staff advisors. So it's a, actually a really cool opportunity to kind of learn about resume basics and then get personalized advice on your own document after. So if you've kind of never done a resume before or you have a draft and maybe it's from high school and you want to update it, that could be a really good program to attend. We had a program earlier this winter session by my colleague Jason Arnone that was fantastic um, and Alan was there as well um, on portfolio and demo reel development. So offering advice on how to build an effective uh, portfolio and online presence for applying to opportunities. Freelancing. Freelancing's um, a really uh, fairly common career path uh, for artists and designers, if not you know, freelancing full-time, freelancing at least part-time or in some way. Um, but oftentimes students have a lot of questions about how to navigate that, how to find clients, how to price work, how to write contracts. There's all kinds of things that go into it. And we offer a program built around understanding freelancing and preparing to freelance if it's something that is interesting to you. As I mentioned earlier, we also um, provide guidance and have a program on seeking um, grants and residencies, which I will get into in a little bit. But if you are curious to learn more, um, we have a program on that. Later in the spring, we're gonna have an opportunity called finding, or a um, workshop called finding exhibition opportunities. Um, and in the past, that's been a really cool one because we've had gallerists and curators and gallery directors actually on a panel talking about um, what do they look for in artists that they put in shows and that they represent. So it's a really cool way to get a perspective on, especially if you're a fine artist and you want to exhibit your work and show your work and make a living that way. It's a really good perspective on the people who, who exhibit artists and show their work. What do they look for and how do they wanna be contacted and things along those lines. So it's a small sample, right? That's just five. I highlighted five just to kind of give you a range. That's five of the you know 30 plus that we do. So there's a ton of programming that we offer throughout the year. So what I encourage you to do is keep an eye on your email every Monday. So the great Alan Tracy um, does an amazing job of uh, putting out every, every Monday a weekly email from our office that highlights the upcoming program that's coming. It's usually this week and the following week. So it's a really, if you just kind of make a habit of opening that email and checking what's coming down the, the pike, um, it'll, it'll really sort of give you a sense of like, okay, this is the career program that's coming up next. You know, is this something I want to attend? And there's a link right in there for you to RSVP and sign up. So it's a great way to kind of stay on top of your career development just by attending these programs. And that'll help you kind of um, we design them so that if you're attending all of these, you're likely to be sort of really well-rounded in your career uh, preparedness. So it's definitely something to do. And they're visually really great. Um, they're well-designed. This is just sort of seeing the iPhone version here. Um, but Alan and crew uh, do a great job um, designing and presenting these. So they they're, should be fun to open to. So cruising right along here. Moving from career advising, career workshops and programs. I wanna spend a little bit of time now talking about in a, in a perhaps more general way, maybe pointing you kind of towards some strategies and resources here on building your application materials. So I talked a little bit earlier about um, how a resume, <clears throat> portfolio and cover letter are important pieces for most the kind of vast majority of um, professional opportunities that you might encounter. And they're, they're important for pretty much everybody to um, have a handle on and develop at some point in their career as a student. And again, this is not to put pressure on you to feel like that this is something like, oh my God, if I don't have these things, I'm behind. That's not the point I'm trying to make. You're in your first year and it's understandable that you might be kind of ramping up to developing these things. But at the same time, um, starting the process, maybe dipping your feet into developing a resume and a portfolio, for example, that might, be a, that might be a good idea as something to try to do before the end of this year. 
even if you're not sure if you, you know, you, nobody's saying you have to apply to internships this year or anything like that, but having these opportunity, I'm sorry, having these documents ready and working on them is really going to set you up for future success. And again, the good news is that you're not on your own with this. Not only do you have resources available, you can tap into on the website, which I'll show you in a second. You also have human advice. You can talk with me or one of my amazing colleagues and we'll walk through this stuff with you and we'll you know, help you develop these things in the strongest way possible. So I mentioned resources on the site. So we have a section of our website. Um, so when you go to the homepage, it's called career prep. If you're on your um, iPhone or a tablet and you click on the hamburger, hamburger pull down, you're kind of seeing that image on the right hand side it's right there as one of the kind of main navigations. And within this section, what's really nice about this is for all these different areas of career development, whether it's resumes, portfolios, networking, interviewing, you name it, we've got pages that help provide guidance and advice on insight on that area of, of career development. Not only do we have advice, as you're kind of seeing with the arrow there, we also have examples of these documents that you can kind of look at and visualize and use as guides in developing your own documents. So this is sort of a screenshot that you're seeing of this guide, of this PDF guide that I'm referring to. And what's really cool about it is if you're new to resume or cover letter writing, this is a great way to see what a resume or cover letter should look like. Look at the language, look at the layouts, look at the organization so that it goes from being something that's like really foreign to you having kind of like a tangible example. And people are really, you know, we're often visual learners, right? So like seeing something in action helps us kind of understand it. So I think that this is a great example of that. So you can kind of see, I'm gonna cycle through a few here. You can see how we have actual examples of resumes, different styles, different layouts, even different experience levels. So this one, Daya Patel here, excuse me, somebody who is a little bit younger and they're kind of leaning into their studio and coursework as a way that they can um, kind of speak to uh, industries or speak to professionals, but still kind of show what they're learning and what they know how to do. And I just wanted to highlight that fact a little bit real quick, because one of the questions that I get the most, especially from either like first year or sophomore level students is, you know, maybe I don't have a lot of work experience. So what do I put on my resume? And I think people overlook courses and studios a lot as actually being something that you can put on the resume. And as you're seeing on the screen here, like you can actually have a section for it. Um, and it's hugely helpful because it is a way for you to kind of tangibly show what do you know about art and design? What are you learning? What skills are you getting? Maybe you can even highlight project work that you've done through that class. So it's a really, really potent way to add to your resume, especially early on in your career. So, you know, this is just one example, but you can go to the website at the site uh, page that I mentioned and find more examples of resumes and also cover letters, which you're seeing here. Um, again, if you're like new to cover letter writing or not really sure what that is, this will kind of help you get a sense of what that looks like. What do you write about in a cover letter? What's the purpose of it? Um, and again, we could always kind of have a deeper dive into cover letter writing in a one-on-one -on -one appointment or in a drop-in session. Portfolios, which are also, you know, we're still under that umbrella of application materials and kind of building your application package. This is also a good thing to dip your feet into. So again, I don't want anybody listening to feel like, like, oh my God, I've got to have a professional portfolio already. I just started college. That's not the idea. But to start getting a portfolio organized and ready and kind of getting a sense of what makes for effective portfolio development, that is a good idea at this stage if you can, if you can manage it. And some of you might have gone to Jason's talk, um, it might have been two weeks ago at this point, um, and learned a ton about portfolio development. Um, but even if you didn't or you weren't able to join that, that's totally cool. We have a lot of available resources and guidance on the website that you can look into. One thing I want to highlight real quick is, as there was for resumes in these other areas, there's a section on portfolios on our website. And as you're kind of seeing on the screen here, we 
kind of provide some written advice on how you can approach developing your portfolio and what tips do we have for how to select work and how to organize work and things like that. But beyond the advice, I want you all to know that there's also um, RISD on Behance. So if, you're, if you've never heard of Behance before, what it is is it's the largest online portfolio community that exists. So it is a place where creatives, creative you know, students, so students in art and design school, but also creative professionals, people who have already graduated, um, share their creative work online, creative work across all industries. So from design to fine art and everywhere in between. And what's awesome about that is a, for everybody who joins Behance and shares their work on there, it's a way for them to get exposure. It's a way for their work to be seen, for people to find what they do and potentially approach them about show opportunities or about internships or about job opportunities or about freelance opportunities. So it's a way to put you and your work out there. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's an important thing for, uh, for any artist or designer, quite frankly. Um, but what's even nicer is that there's actually a subsection of Behance, it's like a school page, that's only available if you are a RISD student or alum. And so I do encourage you to consider this as an option because it's a way for you to build a profile for free, start showing your work online, start adding projects and getting a sense for how to develop a portfolio. And it also does make your life easy if you do decide to apply for internships in the near future because in near future, even being sophomore year, um, because it gives you an online presence and you can link, you know, you can literally use the link to your online Behance profile and put it in your resume so that people have an easy way to find your work. So it's a really nice way to dip your feet into having an online portfolio presence. Um, so check it out, see the work that's on there. You can search by creative fields. So if you're into illustration and you think you might major in that, you can actually look just by illustration. You could look by architecture. You could look by photography. It's, I mean, there, I want to say there's like maybe close to a hundred creative fields listed on there. So it's, it's pretty extensive and chances are, no matter what your major is at RISD, you're going to find work that's relevant to it. Um, so speaking of just because it's fun to look at cool stuff, um, I wanted to highlight some examples that you can literally go find on there from uh, right now from illustration to shoe design and apparel to graphic design and package design work to furniture and three-dimensional design, jewelry and sculptural work. And like I said, photography as well. Um, so that's a small, small sample, but these were all images that were pulled that are pulled from the RISD Behance page. So these are all RISD related projects. Um, and it's a really cool way to, to share your work, as I said. Awesome. And remember, um, I know, uh, I just think I just saw a Q&A pop up, a question pop up, that's great. So just reiterating something Alan said before, I'm gonna go through some stuff, but if I'm, as I'm talking through things, a question pops into your head and you want us to you know, answer it later on, um, I'll, I'll answer things live and Alan will, will, will help out too. Um, so if something pops into your head and you want to um, get it answered later on, just type it in there now and we'll get to it later. So by all means, like as we go through this, feel free if something pops into your mind to just throw it in the Q&A. So next up, and I, I brought this up a little bit earlier when I was talking about like choosing a major, right? Um, and I think one thing that we can definitely help with and we have a lot of resources for, but also this is just good practice when it comes to kind of thinking about your career. And that's exploring alumni career paths or seeing what alumni who've, especially who maybe graduated from disciplines or majors that you're interested in or are planning to be in, seeing what they've gone on to do, right? Where are they working? Where are they living? What kinds of creative work are they producing? What kinds of galleries or grants or residencies um, have they participated in? Um, it, it, it doesn't mean it's predetermined, right? I'm not trying to say that like you must do what other alumni have done. That's not the point. But I think when you're first starting out in school, it's helpful to have guideposts, right? Or it's helpful to have sort of like kind of see the directions you might go in. 
Um, and seeing what other alumni have done is, is a way to do that, make it tangible, make it real. Um, and it gives you an idea of the options. And also you can kind of see how they got to the point that they got to, right? You can kind of see what did they do while they were in school? Where did they intern? What kinds of opportunities did they take advantage of? So that's the idea. Not that you like must stick in a certain path depending on what alumni have done, but it's more of an inspiration thing. So how do you do that, right? That's kind of the next question. So um, we're big fans of LinkedIn at the Career Center. It's not a perfect platform by any stretch of the imagination, but it does um, provide a lot of insight into seeing what uh, alumni and just art and design professionals in general, what are they doing out in the world, especially once you know how to use it. So I imagine that most people in the audience have heard of LinkedIn, but maybe you have a profile, maybe you don't. Even if you have a profile, you might not really know what the purpose behind it is, at least not yet. Um, and that's totally fine. And in fact, a lot of people, regardless of where they're at in school or even you know, professionally, sometimes like they know they have a profile, but they don't really you know, activate it or use it. And I think it's because they don't understand the full value of how to use LinkedIn. I'm not gonna go deep, deep into LinkedIn right now, but I am gonna kind of show you a little kind of snippet of how you can use it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with LinkedIn though, it is worth saying it's the largest online um, networking with professional networking platform in the world. So kind of think of it as like, if Facebook or Instagram were focused on like your professional life, that's kind of what LinkedIn is in a way. Um, <clears throat> but it's a great tool for researching creative career paths, like I said, also exploring and learning about companies and studios and firms that you may want to work at one day or intern for. Um, and it's also because it's a networking platform and because it's social media, it's built to help people connect. So it's actually a really cool way to actually connect and start a dialogue and a relationship with RISD alums that excite you or you want to learn from. And so, you know, on the screen, you're just seeing uh, a screenshot uh, from my iPhone of uh, an alum, Yelitsa Jean Charles, who graduated from illustration, I wanna say 2015, I think, either 2015 or 2016. So pretty recent grad. Um, and in those you know, six years post-grad, uh, Yelitsa has done incredible things. As you can see, she's the CEO and founder of her own company called Healthy Roots Dolls. Um, it's an incredibly successful children's toy and children's dolls company. Um, and they're growing, they're hiring, as you can kind of see from her profile. Um, and she's an incredibly ins inspirational figure. And it's, I'm just using this as an example to like show you on LinkedIn, you can find all kinds of people and you can even find alums who have started their own company or are doing amazing things like Yelitsa is. If you want to learn more, I'm going to show you more about LinkedIn, but um, if you want to like learn more about LinkedIn or learn more about networking and how to connect with alums. Of course, this is something we could talk about in an advising meeting, but also we do have a page on our website dedicated exclusively to networking, which talks more about LinkedIn. And it also talks more about just how to you know, network with people and how to reach out to um, professionals that you're interested in connecting with. Really quickly, so this is gonna be the extent of our of our LinkedIn part of the talk tonight. But I did want to just show you how you can use it to kind of start to explore career paths and explore what alumni have done. So I'm going to have a recorded video here and I'm just going to go full screen for a second. So there's actually a RISD page on LinkedIn that you can go to. You just literally type in Rhode Island School Design and it will take you to the RISD page. And on that page, you can kind of play around with this interactive piece here and search by different majors that people studied at RISD. So that's kind of what you're seeing here as we scroll down. You're seeing all these different areas and majors that are available at RISD and you can click on any one. So in this case, clicking on industrial and product design. And what it will do is it will then kind of refine the information and show you where students who graduated from industrial and product design where they're working. It's actually showing me their profiles here on the screen and I can get a sense of where RISD people have gone uh, to work from industrial and product design. I can then narrow it down even further and pick like a specific city. So maybe I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm just curious where RISD ID grads are living and working 
are working in the San Francisco Bay Area. And again, I can actually like scroll down and see actual examples of those profiles. And if I wanted to, in any of these cases, I could click on, actually click on these. So in a second, it's gonna click on Sophia here and take me to their profile. And I can see what they're doing in this case that they're an interaction designer at Smart Design. And I could go and look at their profile and actually learn more about what they did prior to being an interaction designer at Smart Design and see what internships they did and things like that. So it's a really cool way. I'm going to X out here and get back to my slides. Just give me a second. This always throws me off a little bit. Um, sorry. So it's a really cool way. That was like a crash course sort of, um, but it's a really cool way to start to play around and see different majors, see different locations where RISD alumni are working, and then actually see the companies that they're working at. And that can kind of, again, help you kind of start to get a sense of the different paths and outcomes that RISD alums have. So I'm gonna have to skip this one here. Cool. Variation on the same theme, but I actually think this is a resource that is maybe a little under the radar and people don't know as much about. And that's RISD Made. So it's just RISDMade.com as you're seeing on the screen there. So this is actually really, really cool. So this is actually a resource that's put together by um, the RISD Alumni Relations Office. And it's uh, actually sort of a visual collection. You're kind of seeing an example of it on the right-hand side here where you can actually explore um, RISD studios and RISD artists and designers who have founded their own company and are selling their own work. Um, so you can kind of see as I click through this, you know, you can see things from furniture and textile work to uh, ceramics and fine art oriented work to uh, for like furniture and home goods, like I mentioned before. Oops, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit there. And all of these images on that website, you can click on any one of these and learn more about that company, learn more about the alumni who's behind it, um, have a link to their website in case you wanna see more of what they do. And again, I think from a perspective of learning about what alumni are up to post RISD, it's a really cool way to do that. And then down the line, if you're thinking about, hmm, maybe I'd wanna have an internship with a RISD alum who has founded their own studio and who is selling their own work, this is a great resource to tap into because it is all that, right? This is only, only people on RISD made are RISD alums who are doing that. So it's a great way to kind of even have perspective leads for your, uh, for your internships down the line too. Again, not that you have to intern with a RISD alum, but it's a cool way to, to explore that world. So moving right along here, i um, just gonna take another sip of water. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so another big area that we help students with is finding internships and job opportunities, right? It kind of makes sense for the career center. So helping people find professional opportunities is a big part of what we do. Um, and I want to showcase some, some ways we do that. Um, but also, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind, and again, this kind of going with the theme of the night. Um, it's, I think in your first year, it's a good way, it's a good time to kind of start to explore internships and start to explore what job opportunities might look like in the career paths you're considering. But again, this doesn't have to feel like, oh my God, I have to be applying to these things now or I'm behind. It's more of an exploration aspect at this stage, I think. And again, it helps you gain knowledge about what the next steps might look like. So just, again, wanna kind of be totally upfront and clear about that. One of the biggest ways we help students find opportunities is RISD Artworks. So some of you might have come across this already, but some of you may have not come across it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Artworks is <clears throat> RISD's exclusive internship, job, and artist opportunity board that is exclusive um, and only available to RISD students or alums. So again, this is something that you can access now and also you have access to for the rest of your life once you graduate RISD, which is a pretty cool thing. But what's nice about this is basically when an employer or an organization or a gallery or whatever the organization is, right? However, it fits into the world of art and design. If they have an opportunity 
and they want RISD students or they want RISD alumni to apply to it, this is where we tell them to post the opportunity. So they post their opportunity on here and they select, you know, they write about the description so you can understand what the opportunity is. They select what majors they'd be most interested in hearing from or they feel are most qualified for the opportunity. Sometimes they might say if, you know, they're interested in sophomore level or junior level or whatever the case is, graduate student even, but they kind of explain the parameters and, and what the guidelines are for the opportunity. And you as a student can go in and search the opportunities and find the things that are like most relevant to you and most exciting to you. So what you're seeing on the screen here, I kind of took a snapshot. I just wanted to highlight um, internships because I think as a first year student, like that's the closest thing, right? You're probably, it's too early to be thinking about full-time jobs at this stage, but internships are maybe, you know, not too far away. So I wanted you to kind of see that you can even just narrow down by internships. You can also narrow down by major, like I said, by location. So it's a really cool way to start to understand opportunities that are out there and explore what's available. The other thing, and you're seeing it in the second bullet point there, and you're also seeing it on the screen in the screenshot, that little blue um, kind of uh, footer at the bottom that says turn on email alerts for this search. The other cool feature, there's, there's many cool features about artworks that I, I won't go into too much detail on, but this feature I really like because what you can do is you can do a search once on our works, right? So you could say, all right, I am curious to learn about internships for um, printmaking students, let's say. So I can set my parameters as internships for printmaking students. And once you set that parameter, you can then say, turn on email alerts for this search and Artworks will automatically email you to your RISD email address um, any new opportunities that come into, that are posted to Artworks that fit the criteria you set up, they'll do it weekly. So every week you'll get an email that says like, here are some new opportunities that came in that met, that met your criteria that you set up for your last search. So it's a really cool way, again, if you're kind of just opening your email periodically and seeing what's available, it's a nice way to stay on top of and learn about opportunities that are available to you. So this is kind of like what I did with, excuse me, <clears throat> my throat's a little dry. Uh, kind of like what I was doing with RISD portfolios or, or uh, RISD on Behance earlier, I want to just kind of visualize some of the opportunities and some of the studios and firms that you can find on Artworks that have posted opportunities or hired from RISD before. Because I think it's kind of cool, it's inspirational, kind of gives you a sense of what the future can look like. I'm going to highlight some. Keep in mind, again, this is just like a sampling. This is, I could never cover all the different opportunities that are on there, but I wanted you to get a sense. So Ann Walsh is a really cool um, advertising and creative agency in New York City. It's actually founded by a RISD alum, Jessica Walsh. And as you can see, um, they really have a, an incredibly diverse makeup of their team. And I think they're sort of like avant-garde in the design world as far as like spearheading new directions in design. Um, and of course, it's always cool to see, um, you know, graduates from RISD who have started their own studios and Ann Walsh is an example of that. It's actually gonna be a theme that's gonna come up a couple of times in the ones that I'm highlighting just as a heads up. Um, Cartoon Network Studios, many of you probably know, you might even watch some of their programs and some of their original animated features. Um, but it's really cool, right? Like one of the major producers of animated content on TV has come to RISD before. They've met with students and reviewed portfolios. They've hired uh, production interns before, like lots of cool RISD connections there as well. Himat Singa is a, a local um, Rhode Island uh, jewelry studio, relatively small, but, but pretty successful and also a RISD alumni owned studio as well. So like, again, we're kind of seeing the scale, right? From like major places like Cartoon Network to kind of like smaller um, smaller studio environments. And, you know, that's part of a career path, right? Is kind of exploring the different environments and kind of what fits you and the kind of environments that you want to be a part of. Liz Collins is a, a really amazing um, graduate of RISD also a former faculty member, and as you can see on the screen, um, artist as well, textile-based artist, and she makes these amazing textile-based installations. This image is, is gorgeous, but you can go to her website and see a ton of amazing work. Um, and Liz is somebody who's hired from RISD before, hired interns and, and, 
and other roles. Um, so it's really cool. Again, like a, a really um, well-known artist, also really RISD connected artist who's uh, posting things on artworks. Raymond Jungles is sort of, is an architectural firm and a landscape architecture firm. Um, and you can kind of see from the image here, the type of work they do. So they're working in, in built environments and built spaces, but their thing, they're really the crux of what they do is integrating uh, nature, sustainability into built environments and doing so in a responsible way and in a beautifully engaging way too. I love this name. The, the department. This is a production company called the Department of Motion Pictures. It's like to me, I, I love that tongue-in-cheek name. It's the best. Um, and you can kind of get a sense from what you're seeing on the screen. They they produce a lot of uh, different kinds of films, from documentary to um, to feature films, to narrative, etc. Um, and they've hired from Disney different roles before. One of the cool things I saw from them, and not uh, not too long ago, was actually like a paid storyboarding. Um, illustration position uh, where the, it was like an internship position um, where the intern was going to be paid to help storyboard one of their uh, upcoming films. And that's not always an opportunity that you can uh, find as an internship. Um, so that was really cool to see them offer that. Eckhouse Lada is another RISD alumni founded company in the apparel space um, with a not exclusive focus, but a lot of their focus is on uh, knitwear. And um, so if you're interested in either apparel or textiles, this is a cool company to know about. Um, they do incredibly innovative work. I actually had them talk at one of our events called RISD Mindshare a few years back, where they talked about their path at RISD and then also you know, their own path in coming up with the idea for the business and developing it and making it the success that it is today. So another really cool RISD connected place. So, so limited, as you can kind of see, um, does technologically based um, art and design installations in public spaces. So if you're somebody who's interested in that nexus between sort of like public art, public installations, but also how technology is, you know, important or can work its way into that discussion. Um, so, so limited is a cool place, again, that has um, hired from RISD before and recruited from RISD and is always interested in RISD talent. Abby Lippman is a RISD alum, and also this is another RISD founded studio. Um, kind of get a sense from the screen here, but what Abby's studio does is create original art and original pattern and color work for, um, for apparel. So uh, they're not kind of, this is an interesting like kind of subset to learn about, but so they're not an apparel studio themselves in the sense that they're not like creating garments they're creating the print and patterns that go on garments. So they actually like sell the original artwork to then be used by apparel studios. And there's, um, that's like this cool little subset of the apparel industry. And it's, uh, you know, a thing that you can do, uh, especially if you're painting, illustration or textiles, um, that's an area that you can go into for sure. New House is a really cool local studio in Rhode Island and also founded by RISD alums. You kind of get a sense from the screen, they do pneumatic or inflated installations. Um, so a sort of like art collective art company that's being commissioned by uh, organizations, governments, cities, etc. to put on these, uh, to create and install these amazing installations. Their website's fun to look at too. Um, their, their work is amazing and really original. If you're interested in museums and cultural institutions and gallery spaces, We've had interns and people have been hired at places like the Whitney Museum of American Art. Um, so if you're interested in, in exhibitions or you're interested in curation or museum education, um, there's really so much activity that happens in museums. There's all different kinds of ways you can get involved, but there are opportunities through our office to engage with those kinds of organizations too. Converse, a lot of people know it, pretty, pretty well-known shoe and apparel company, um, not too far away, uh, based in Boston. Um, really great place that we've heard good things about um, RISD students interning. And again, there's like a nice recent history of students from all different kinds of programs and all different kinds of departments at RISD interning there. Um, so if you're interested in apparel, um, performance wear, shoe design, could be a cool place. Mighty Oak's a studio I really, really love. So Mighty Oak, again, another RISD founded, uh, I told you there'd be a pattern here, another RISD founded studio. It's an animation studio, but they're unique in that um, you can kind of get a sense. They do handmade animation. So a lot of a lot of cut paper, a lot of stop motion, 
um, a really kind of meticulous and craft oriented form of animation. The work is gorgeous. Um, it's a women led studio. So it's all uh, women led, mostly RISD alums who founded the studio. Um, so it's a really, I think, an exciting, exciting place doing really, really cool work in the animation space. Um, and they're super friendly people uh, have hosted interns for many years now um, and are doing well, continue to grow, which is awesome. We love to see it. The last one, I know this is, <laughs> I'm showing you a lot, but I get excited about this stuff. Um, Apple, let's end with a company that nobody knows about, right? Um, so Apple, if you're into big tech, if you're into AR, VR, innovative um, new technologies, those kinds of companies are eager to hear from RISD people too. Um, so we routinely, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, people recruiting from Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, et cetera. Um, so if you're into those kinds of companies or you think you might want to explore opportunities there, that is definitely an opportunity that you can pursue through our office. All right, so good. Um, just taking a look at the time and we're hitting kind of the tail end here of the last thing I want to share with you. And then of course, if there are questions, excuse me, we'll open it up and we'll tackle some questions. But I wanted to try to keep this brisk, give you an introduction to what we do, um, and then also kind of let you get on to your next thing, as I know you're all super, super busy too. So last thing I want to talk about is something that is maybe if you're a first year student, um, maybe you haven't heard a ton about. Maybe you have. And if you have, great. But if you haven't, it's OK if like you're seeing the words grants, residencies, and even entrepreneurship, maybe. Um, and you're sort of like not super clear what these things are. So I'm going to try to break it down there. I'll try to talk about grants and residencies in particular in a general way. But the truth is there's a huge variety of different kinds of grants, of different kinds of artist residency opportunities. So it's tough to kind of like tell you exactly what they are because they look a little bit different. Um, but I want to introduce you to the concepts a little bit so you can if you're curious about it something you can start to explore and we have kind of tools and resources that can help with that of course so what are grants and residencies in particular like i said they vary but a lot of the time grants and residencies are providing artists and designers with a couple of things at least so they might be providing focused time time to work on their projects studio space to work on their projects or physical resources or tools or equipment that they may not normally have access to, but this residency space, for example, has access or provides those resources so that they can incorporate it into their practice, right? So it's not always all three of those things, but oftentimes a grant or a residency might provide some of those things. A grant in particular might provide funding, actual money to execute a creative project or to um, in some way fund something that you want to do in your creative project uh, practice, I should say. So a grant is usually funding. It's usually money tied to your practice and executing on a project or a given purpose. They also might provide either money or other resources for project oriented research or maybe even for you to travel to a different place and explore a culture or explore a artistic technique that is very common in that region or with a specific group of people, but is maybe not as common where you come from. So it's a chance for you to sort of like learn about that technique um, and, and, and engage with it in a meaningful way, right? So sometimes grants can provide that kind of an opportunity and residencies too, to a certain extent. Um, especially on the residency side of things, it can also provide access to a fellow community of artists and designers. So usually if you take part in a residency, you are physically going to a place where you would have studio space, you'd have physical resources to create artwork and focus time. You know, you'd be there for two weeks or a month or two months, whatever it may be. Um, and you're given that kind of space and resources to create work. In addition, not always, but oftentimes, there's also other artists who are in that space or at that same residency or around the same time as you. So it's actually sort of giving you access to other artists and other creative people. And so at this point, you might be thinking, well, I'm in school right now, right? So 
aren't you kind of talking about what school is? Like school gives me studio space. School gives me access to all, you know, resources and, and equipment that I need to make my work. Um, and I get that. I totally get where you're coming from with that question. I think importantly, especially when it comes to residencies, though, though not exclusively residencies, it's important to also realize though, that sometimes after you graduate, it can be challenging at points to have access to all of the different resources you need to be able to make your artwork. Now, of course, if you're an artist, you eventually may found your own studio and have your own studio where you have access to the tools that you need. And that's absolutely like a legitimate thing that people do all the time. But at the same time, residencies can provide access to different kinds of equipment, different kinds of space, different kinds of environments. And so as an artist to be stimulated creatively in that way and also have access to different tools and resources that are maybe not in your hometown or home city, once you graduate from school, that can become really important. Residencies are, are something you can do in school too, especially during the summer, it is possible. Um, but I'm bringing this up to you as a thing for you to potentially think about, like get used to now, explore now, and maybe consider for later on in your career. So. This is a tough topic to talk about without kind of going into some detail and we don't really have the time to, to go into a ton of detail tonight, but I did want to kind of like set the groundwork so that this is something you can kind of think about and explore a little bit. One way you can do that is by looking into our RISD Career Center managed awards. So our office actually kind of provides some grants and residency and other art related awards that are only accessible to RISD students. Um, so that are only accessible if you are a student at RISD, they're, they're not accessible to people outside of the RISD community. Um, and usually these fall into the following categories. So it's either like funding related to internships. So like grant funding related to internships, funding that would support your ability to go to a residency, like I was mentioning before. So like maybe in the summer when you're not in school, you could attend a residency. Or funding that can be directly applied to your creative practice, to your art practice or design practice in different ways. So this link, which I'm sure Alan will share out, um, breaks down all the different grant residency opportunities and RISD Manage Award opportunities that we have. Some of what you see, and even some of what I'm about to show, are not accessible to, to first year students in, you know, at this stage. So where you're at right now, some of what's on that page is not accessible to you. Some will come down the line. But I want you to kind of know about it and know where you can go to find more information and kind of start to get the wheels turning on how you could access these things later on. So one example of what you'd find on that page is one of the awards we offer called the Meharam Fellowship. And this is a really, really cool opportunity. I'm like super proud that our office is involved in it. And I think it's an amazing thing. And it's been going on for 10 plus years, I believe. Um, so this is actually a $5,000 award that can go to a student who has an unpaid internship, summer internship in an organization where artists and designers are not typically found. So it's in, you, you know, you're uh, interning at an organization that is not you know, at least at face value is not like an artist studio or a design studio or something like that. It's a different kind of organization that usually falls outside of art and design. Also what, it, what that organization is and what your internship is about is the organization's in some way working to address social issues or um, sustainability, issues around climate change and sustainability. And this is one of the reasons why I really love this grant, which is that interns who get in a, a get a Meharam Fellowship are doing really positive things in the world and working for really, really positive organizations. The organizations do have to be either a nonprofit or a non-government um, or a government organization. So it can't be a for-profit company. Um, and like I said, this is one of those things where next starting next year, you'd have access to apply to this, to this opportunity, to this award. So anybody who's essentially sophomore level and higher is eligible to apply. Um, so I encourage you to check it out, go to our website, learn more about it. There's actually a website for RISD Meharam Fellows um, where you can actually go and see the different um, Meharam Fellowships that have gone on in the past. You can see what students have done and where they've interned. It's a cool thing to kind of have under radar for the future. 
On the residency side, we have a, a partnership with Skowhegan, which is one of the most well-known artist residencies um, in the country. And this is a really cool thing because it's a nine week summer residency. So it actually is something that you potentially can do um, even while you're enrolled as a student because you can do it during the summer. It's a nine week summer residency at Skowhegan. Um, it's eligible or available to all enrolled undergrad and grad students. So all you essentially, it doesn't matter your level, you just have to be an enrolled student at RISD. And it's a $6,000 award, um, which essentially covers all your costs in terms of being at the residency. So the residency fee, housing while you're there, studio space, meals while you're there. So in terms of basically covering all your expenses while you're at the residency, that nine weeks, it, it's covered. Um, so it's a really amazing opportunity. And for somebody who wants to use summer to sort of explore their artistic practice um, and develop their work, it's a really cool opportunity that way. It is very competitive, you know? So these kinds of applications are, are sometimes, you know, very competitive and there is an application process, um, but it's definitely something to consider having on your radar. In terms of something that's more about, you know, funding directly to you that you can use um, for your practice in some way, we have an award like the St. Baltif Award. So this is a $3,000 kind of project grant that the artist or, or student can kind of use as they wish. They can kind of apply that funding more or less as they want to. Um, the one catch with this one really is that uh, you do design your own project, but the project has to have an emphasis on a connection to New England in some way, either the content or theme of what you're making has to be related to New England, or it could be that you're putting on a public art installation and it's taking place in New England. The reason for that is like St. Baltif is a New England based organization and they are providing the funding for this. So they wanna see the project in some way connected to New England. This is one again, like just maybe for down the line, kind of bookmark it and tag it away. Um, it is for, you know, geared towards people who are a little bit older in the uh, educational process, but it is a really cool example of like, hey, you can actually just get money to execute a creative project. That's a really amazing thing. So as we wrap up here, I'm going to pivot and just switch gears a bit um, and talk a little bit about learning about business, learning about entrepreneurship, learning about freelancing or running your own studio. So I know this might feel like a ways down the line, but I want you to know that if you are thinking about like, hey, I may wanna have my own art studio, or I may wanna be a freelance graphic designer and work with different clients and provide graphic design skills to different people or services to different people. Um, or I may wanna start my own um, industrial design or furniture design studio where I'm producing objects and selling them to the public. Those are just a few examples, but like, all of those are entrepreneurial examples, right? You're working independently, you're self-employed, you're working for yourself or mostly working for yourself. And our office is a resource to help you understand that pathway and get the skills you need to be successful at it. There's a lot of different ways we do this, but I'll highlight a couple. So we actually have a partnership with Harvard Business School um, where they offer their core program. It's like online, um, Harvard business classes, essentially, that kind of teach you the core of business skills. And it's a course that you can take over the summer. It's an online, well, it's a series of courses that you can take online over the summer. Um, and actually, there's uh, scholarship funding that you can access potentially, as well as funding that our office can offer as well to people who successfully complete the program. So not only is there potentially scholarship money coming from Harvard to offset the cost, you could also get additional money from RISD and our office to participate in this. So this is something you can learn more about. I'll show the link in a second where you can explore it more. We actually, we're actually offering RISD Art of Business right now, which is a series of four programs over winter session. You can kind of see the um, uh, branding material on the right there. Um, and we do this every year. And this program is essentially, we invite speakers, like content experts to come in and talk about marketing and selling work online, business planning and understanding how to start a business entity, um, taxes and how do you do taxes if you are working independently and even things like contracts and legal issues if you're you know, freelancing or an entrepreneur of some kind. So we actually have people come in and put on webinars 
and walk you through the basics of all of those things. So you as an artist or designer can be better equipped in tackling those issues. There's still one left actually. So later this week, we're gonna have our RISD alum, Greg Kanan, who is not only an alum, but also a lawyer, pretty cool mix, um, talk about contracts. So if you wanted to kind of engage with our business, there's actually still time um, between now and our final talk on Thursday. And then this is a really cool thing. So this is not something that we run necessarily, but we um, are connected with. So there's actually a student entrepreneurship club at RISD called eShip that you can all engage with and they 100% welcome first year students. So don't feel like you need to be older or anything like this to take advantage of it. Like you can totally connect with this as a first year student. But it's a club for people who are interested in founding their own studio, um, startups, running their own business, having their own artistic practice. It's a student club all around that. And they actually have a program that they run every year called Upstart, which is actually where students who have a business idea or an idea for a creative studio can apply with that idea. And if you get accepted, you can get a little bit of funding toward implementing that idea. And also um, there's a curriculum that they run essentially um, workshops that they run throughout the spring that can help you better understand the steps you need to make that a reality. So it's a really cool student run program that um, I, I hope you'll check out if you're interested in potentially learning about business or entrepreneurship. All of the things I just mentioned and more are available at the link that is on the screen, which Alan um, probably has already shared out. Um, so check that out if you wanna learn more. <clears throat> Last but not least, here's another really cool thing on the kind of like business entrepreneurship spectrum that we do. So a lot of you have probably heard of Kickstarter, you know, and crowdfunding in general. Um, as a way to fund creative projects. And I think it's, you know, it's not for everything, it's not for every project or every person, but I think in general, it's a really good tool that creative people can access to get their projects off the ground and get a little bit of funding if they need it. And what's really cool is with Kickstarter specifically, RISD actually has, we have like a partnership essentially. And there's a RISD curated page where if you want to launch a, a Kickstarter project, you can kind of get it added visibility on the RISD curated page and people can actually search for RISD related projects. And it's a way to kind of help generate more interest in more funding for your creative project. Kind of a mind blowing stat, um, over $6 million has been raised. That is not a typo, that's real. And it's actually, I think it might even be over 7 million at this point, that might be an old data figure to be completely honest. Um, well, let's just say 6 million because it's, I know that's at least right. Um, over 6 million has been raised by projects that are on the RISD Kickstarter curated page. So it is like a legit way to fund creative projects and to gain funding if you need to buy materials, if you need to print something, if you like whatever, whatever funding need you have for your creative project, chances are it could fit into Kickstarter. And it's for all kinds of different creative projects from film and animation and production projects to crafts or more fine art oriented projects or exhibitions or public art installations to fashion and apparel and textiles to publishing to games even. Um, we've had some you know, illustration students that have kind of, a, there's a, a class uh, called 3D illustration that sometimes students produce games out of and then those games have been funded um, uh, on Kickstarter and gone on to be like sold. And it's a really amazing thing. So pretty much all kinds of creative categories can be funded on Kickstarter. And you're seeing just on the screen, this is a project that I think got funded about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. And it was a student who had an idea for an original, originally illustrated watercolor illustrations tarot deck. And they had the concept but they, would, they needed funding and help with materials and with printing costs and things like that. And they were able to successfully fund over $25,000 towards those costs to make it a reality and distribute it to people who wanted that deck. It's like a, it's a cool example of like, while you're a student, if you have an idea, you might be able to make that thing a reality on Kickstarter. Check out the RISD Kickstarter page. If you're interested in learning more, I actually work with um, students and alums who are interested in this and might want to launch a campaign. And it does require work and it requires a lot of planning. It's not like a simple snap of the figure that like, oh, I just do a Kickstarter and magically I have money. There's a lot that goes into it. I don't want to mislead. But at the same time, 
it is a cool kind of outside of the box opportunity to fund stuff. And I would, you know, give it a look and see if it might either now or in the future be an option for you. So we're at the end. And basically to recap here, if there are a couple of questions, we can tackle those. But um, I just wanted to say, here's basically what we talked about tonight. And here are the ways that you can connect with us moving forward. Don't forget, you can meet with advisors at the Career Center right now, remotely, virtually over Zoom. But in the future, I'm sure we'll be back on campus and it can happen in person too. You can do that via appointments or uh, uh, drop-in sessions. Attend our career programs. Alan does a great job of sending out those emails every Monday, so keep an eye on those. Go online to start get tips to start getting tips about building professional application materials like resumes and cover letters and portfolios, and also something you can talk with us about in appointments. You can learn about alumni career paths through LinkedIn and RISD Made and other tools. Um, start to explore and research internships and jobs, even if you're not sure if you're ready for it just yet. Start to kind of look at what's out there and start to get acclimated and acquainted with the worlds of grants, residencies, and entrepreneurial opportunities. And that is my spiel for the evening. I welcome anybody to throw questions out there. And Alan, I, of course, welcome you into the convo too. And uh, yeah, see what we got to see if there's any questions. Great job, Scott. Thank you so much. I know that's a ton to digest. It um, is. Meant to be a, a real wide survey of what happens, you know, in any area that you'd like to deep dive with us, um, please just do be in contact. I sent out um, more links, Scott, than you would have maybe wanted. Um, oh, but that's I, great. I good, sent good. out everything you were asking for, plus, you know, some more specific areas of the website. Um, and I just want to, one question I did answer by yeah. typing in, Athena had asked if the portfolio and demo reel program was available to watch someplace. Good point. Um, and I shared this link, um, basically the link I just shared now, that's to all the re event recordings. So even this event, you know, will be posted there in the next couple of days. Um, but every time we do a career program, if we have permission from the people who are presenting, we do share the, we do put them up and, and keep them up until they, um, you know, it either makes sense to take them down or get replaced with similar content. Yep. So Athena, I just wanted to, to thank you for that question and share that link again in case anybody missed it. And then, so Scott, um, there was a second question. Jessica had asked, um, this was a, a bit back in the presentation. Jessica yeah. was asking, what is the difference between putting your portfolio on Instagram versus on Behance? Yeah, uh, it's a really- Thank you. She's, Jessica says, thank you. Okay, sorry, Alan, didn't mean to cut you off there. Yep, no problem. Um, so great, it's a great question, Jessica. And I think, so the way to think about, there is a difference between an Instagram or you know sharing work on social media versus an online portfolio. Um, and I think so like Behance is kind of like the online portfolio and then Instagram is sharing your work on social media. It's okay to do both. So it's not like you have to choose one or the other. I wanna say that right off the bat. Um, but I think what you want to have with a Behance or, or you can have your own website even, but having an online portfolio presence is really important where it's just, it's your work. It's only your work. People have the opportunity to click on projects and potentially not just see one image of that project, but see a breakdown of your process and see what went into that uh, what's the kind of background or inspiration or thematically, what were you thinking about with that piece or series? So a portfolio is not just a sharing of an image, but oftentimes it is a breakdown of creative projects and you're kind of showcasing your process and how you make um, most of the time. Instagram is a great thing. And it is a place where you can show and share work. And what is nice about Instagram is that it's such a widely used community that can be a way for people to like organically find your work and see what you do. But it's not the same as a portfolio because for one on your Instagram, you may not exclusively be dedicated to showing work, right? Like some people show work on their Instagram, but then they also show, you know, they go out to a restaurant and they had good food and they take a snapshot of the food and that's on their Instagram. So 
your Instagram is sometimes a mix of creative work as well as, you know, just things that are going on in your life that you're sharing with the world. And that's okay. Um, but if that was all you had, that's not really a professional portfolio. You wouldn't share your Instagram with somebody you were um, reaching out to about an internship opportunity because they're not going to care so much about that snapshot of the food that you ate. They want to see your work. They want to understand what creative skills you have, what art and design skills you have, what you can produce. And that's really what they want to focus on. So a portfolio, of, I'm kind of talking a lot, but portfolio has like a laser focus on your work. Instagram may include work. It may include other things that are a part of your life. And it also may even just include things like, you know, sometimes people will share videos of them working in their studio. And that's really cool. I like that that can be on Instagram, but that's maybe not something you'd include in a portfolio, which again is really focused on projects and process. So hopefully that made sense in the fact that like, it's okay to have both, but the portfolio is really what you share with regards to applying to opportunities, be they fine art or design. Fantastic. Alan, any additions there? That, that makes sense? Fantastic. No, okay. made, made tons of sense, Scott. And, you know, the, I think the highlight there is the focus, you know, make yep. it easy on the employer to find what they need to see because Instagram, they could get lost in like all the cool stuff you're sharing, but they really need to see like those few design projects that you had um, or that painting series. And like, it just makes it so much easier for um, them to get to the work um, and not get lost. Well said, so, very well said. And Scott, that, that was it on the questions end of things. Cool. I must so, have nailed it then. I must have just done a perfect job. <laughs> you, you did them all. Oh, wait. So hold on. We, um, so Yana is asking, um, mm, yeah. do we, do we have, um, the recordings of the art of business seminars? I remember the first one was shared on Vimeo, but not future, um, videos. So do you want to explain? So, that? uh, yeah, this one's, a, uh, this one's a little bit more complicated to answer, but, um, so if you registered for the talks, the art of business talks, um, you received an email with the recordings for those talks. However, we have agreements in place with the speakers, with the people who provided those talks, where we could only make those recordings available to people who registered and also only for a time period of 10 days. Um, and we have to respect our agreements with those individuals, the people who are providing those talks, because in some ways, um, some of the information they share in those videos are part of how they make a living, you know, and we don't want to, we don't want to violate our agreement with them. So. So the answer is, is yes, sort of, um, but you have, again, you have to have registered in advance. So there's one talk left on contracts. And if you want to, A, I would encourage you to attend it live because you could ask questions and that's always super valuable. But if you can't, make sure you register between now and Thursday so that you might have the opportunity to access those recordings after the fact. Um, and that's, that's just a, that is a bit of a unique thing for art of business in particular. That's not how all of our recordings work. As Alan said, like you can go to that link for some of our other recordings, but for art of business, it is a unique scenario. Yeah. Um, cool. and that looks like it, Scott. All right. You, you well good? then, um, I hope this was helpful for everybody who stuck around. Um, I know you're all super busy, so we'll wrap it up. Um, just know, contact us. If you have questions, you wanna schedule an appointment, you, you don't know where to go or where to start with something, just reach out to us. We're super accessible and friendly and we'll never be upset by you asking a question. So just reach out. <laughs> thank you very much, Scott. And um, Skylar is saying thank you for very helpful. Awesome, so glad, glad to hear it, thanks. So thanks for thank saying you. everybody. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you go. Good night, everybody. Take care. See you. Thanks again, Alan. You got it, Scott. Thank you. See ya.